Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, November 5th, 2021. Increasing the IRS budget, a waste of money. The IRS has acknowledged that federal income tax evasion is now at the trillion-dollar-a-year level. The proposed solution? A huge increase in the IRS's budget. Now, that really shouldn't surprise anyone. For decades, Washington bureaucrats have been stuck on the idea that the solution to any problem is to throw more money at it. 52,000 of the present 83,000 IRS employees are expected to retire or leave the agency in the next five years. Most of these are experienced agents. Now, President Biden wants to add 87,000 new IRS agents and have most of them auditing tax returns. Now, of course, the new hires will have little to no experience and relatively few will have formal accounting training. Now, hiring more employees would make sense if the problems at the IRS were rooted in a simple lack of manpower. Sadly, though, that is just not the case. Simply adding more employees won't transform the IRS into a finely tuned operation that runs smoothly and efficiently. The problems with the IRS are rooted in the Internal Revenue Code itself. The very nature of the IRC makes it difficult to enforce without infringing on the basic freedoms that most Americans cherish. As Albert Einstein said, nothing is more destructive of respect for the government and the law of the land than passing laws that can't be enforced. A 2021 article that appeared in the Americans for Tax Reform website provided the following information. A Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, or TIGTA, report on the 2021 filing season found that almost 40% of printers were not working at tax processing centers in Ogden, Utah, and Kansas City, Missouri. However, in many cases, the only thing wrong with these printers was that no one had replaced empty ink cartridges or emptied the waste cartridge container. IRS employees stated the only reason they could not use many of these devices is because they're out of ink or because the waste cartridge container is full. This year, despite having funding for new hires, the IRS only achieved 37% of its hiring goal. They had trouble onboarding new hires as well, as it was difficult to find working copiers, as noted above, to be able to prepare training packages. The National Taxpayer Advocate's 2018 annual report to Congress noted that the IRS was ranked last out of 15 agencies in its ability to provide quality communication. The report notes that taxpayers trying to reach the IRS are often left floundering on the rocks of confusion, frustration, and misinformation. The National Taxpayer Advocate's 2020 report to Congress noted that the IRS had failed to hire over 5,000 full-time employees for which it had allocated funding. This was because of the agency's disorganization, incompetence, and the existence of labor union rules that promote unnecessary bureaucracy. In 2016, the IRS has lost track of laptops containing sensitive taxpayer data. TIGTA estimates that the IRS had failed to properly document the return of 84.2%, that's more than 1,000 computers, due to be returned by contract employees. A TIGTA report in 2017 showed that the IRS rehired more than 200 employees who had been fired for previous conduct or performance issues. Each year, the IRS hangs up on millions of callers, a practice they refer to as courtesy disconnects. Well, currently, if you call the IRS, you have a 1 in 50 chance of reaching a human being. According to the National Taxpayer Advocates 2014 annual report to Congress, the IRS was unable to justify spending decisions. As the report stated, The IRS lacks a principled basis for making the difficult resource allocation decisions necessitated by today's tight budget environment. The agency has repeatedly failed to compile legally required tax complexity reports. These reports are supposed to contain the IRS's specific recommendations on how to make the tax code easier to comply with. Since 1998, the IRS has made just two of these reports, in 2000 and again in 2002. 
In 2015, the IRS was spending $1,000 an hour hiring a litigation-only white shoe law firm for an investigation, despite having over 40,000 of their own employees dedicated to enforcement efforts. Also in 2015, the agency was caught red-handed wasting taxpayer dollars on Nerf footballs, the world's largest crossword puzzle, extravagant $100 lunches, and more. In conclusion, Mr. President and members of Congress, it's time to recognize that the income payroll tax system is not the best way to collect revenue for the federal government. Now, yes, the 16th Amendment and the courts have ruled that the income payroll tax system is legal, but remember the words of Abraham Lincoln who said, you must remember that some things that are legally right are not morally right. Please recognize that hiring a new army of IRS agents won't solve the problem. It'll actually make it worse by increasing the number of abuses directed at honest taxpayers who are trying to comply with an incomprehensible and sometimes contradictory tax code. When that happens, you'll see two things. More people evading their own taxes and more honest people sympathizing with the ever-growing number of tax evaders. It's time to pass the fair tax. The fair tax will show every person in America multiple times a day that there is a cost to the government benefits that they're receiving. It'll reduce the amount of annual increase in the federal debt by at least a trillion dollars because it drastically reduces evasion. The fair tax will bring back high-paying jobs to America that are now being forced overseas by the income payroll tax system. It will eliminate tax returns and the IRS, will prevent Medicare from running out of money by 2026, and will also make Social Security solvent. So, what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives demanding that if the government really wants to eliminate the burden of filing income tax returns, they should enact the fair tax and do away with tax returns altogether. The great 18th century Irish statesman Edmund Burke made a statement that applies in many ways. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. The IRS will be gone and will pay our taxes when we make purchases. We, not the ruling class and their minions in D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay. If you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under How It Works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. And then contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. <laughs> This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 